Hi, uh, I have a question for the audience. How many of you think that the air quality uh, in the mega cities of India has increasingly become toxic? Then what are we doing about it? Uh, this is the question I ask myself every single day uh, when I get out for a walk in the morning or I get out in the evening. I shuttle a lot between Bombay and Delhi and I see that the air pollution in Bombay and Delhi is getting worse day by day. Hello everyone, my name is Puneet and I am the co-founder of Blue Smart Mobility. I've been a clean energy entrepreneur uh, and in the past I've set up several solar power plants in India between 28 to 2018 uh, and I had the privilege to start Blue Smart Mobility with my co-founder. Uh, I'm on a mission uh, at Blue Smart to decarbonize mobility in mega cities of India. The challenges are massive. Uh, we fundamentally believe that the air pollution is terrible. Uh, and we should do something about it. But with challenges also comes opportunities. So I'm going to speak about opportunities uh, for startups, for businesses, for entrepreneurs to address the worsening air quality uh, in the mega city of India. So it was the winter uh, season of the year 2019 in Delhi. The air quality index or the AQI was about 500. In, in some areas of Delhi and CR it was north of 563. People were breathless, they were short of air, they could not breathe just normal air. The air pollution problem seems to be getting worse and worse and worse with each passing year, with each passing quarter going forward. Now some facts for everyone. A study by Harvard University revealed that 30% of Indians will die by 2030 because of air pollution. 2.5 million people died in 2018 just because of air pollution and by 2030, uh, by, by 2030 it is estimated that 30% of Indians will die because of bad air quality. Uh, sharing some facts that 9 of the top of the world's most polluted cities are in India itself. India is the APAC region, but India largely has 9 of the world's, of the, of the world's most polluted cities. So whether you are a rich person or you are a poor person, whether you are in Delhi or Ghaznabad or Faridabad, everybody has access to the same air quality, which is getting worse by day by day. In my research, I also found out that emissions from transportation is the single largest contributor to greenhouse, uh, to greenhouse gas emissions in Delhi and CR. Also, 40% of, uh, of air pollution in mega cities like San Francisco and regions like California are because of transportation. Now, data from, uh, data from the world Air quality report. The data from the 2021 World Air Quality Report shows that PM 2.5 concentrations, which are 10, more, 10, 10 times more than WHO guidelines, are alarming. Bad air quality is cutting the lifespan of people in mega cities of India, like the Delhi and CR. AQI is all around the year is about 250 to 250, in peace to about 550 to 600, in 4 to 5 months in a year. Now we all know that there is no plan B. Climate change is an incredibly complex problem and the single biggest threat to humanity. As a society, we need to take collective steps to address the challenges of climate change. If we don't act today, this will be devastating for the future generations to come. COVID-19 was bad, was rather very bad, but the effects of climate change and the worsening air quality will, will be ten x worse. Now there is a massive opportunity for startups and entrepreneurs uh, to address this issue of worsening air quality by building businesses with innovative business models. Increasingly we are seeing ride hailing platforms and public transportation platforms in India, in the US and UK going full stack electric and fully electric. Uh, we could have differentiating supply side models, uh, one can differentiate supply side models and change the way mobility has been built in now. One could also work on the consumer centric approach by getting better the human experience to the viewer than what we have today. We can also uh, bring tons and tons of uh, greenhouse gas emissions down by using EVs. Uh, we are seeing markets like UK, US, also now India companies like Newsmart India and Driven in the US are now working towards changing the entire mobility paradigm. Uh, electric cars globally will change a big challenge. Uh, this will all be a challenge for countries like India where emission is incredibly high. Uh, these, these are greenhouse gas emissions. EVs are great for the planet, great for everyone's prosperity, and great for uh, the entire nation. 
Library is a public transportation platform that will be closely with mega cities like San Francisco, like the UK, in London, uh, like Delhi and CR, and are adopting an approach to electrify major global uh, mega cities by working closely with local authorities. Now, we are seeing three major trends, uh, three fundamental business models. The future is electric. Uh, Facebook wrote a report right now that the future of uh, public transportation and the future of ride gaming is full stack, is asset heavy, and is fully electric. Increasingly, all electric fleet adoption is due to stringent emission norms set by transportation authorities and governments in the UK and the US and Europe. What are the benefits of shipping to electric? There's very little economics, the cost of electric cars are coming down, the cost of batteries coming down, the lower total cost of operation is very, very favorable. So, if you run an electric car ride hailing platform, it costs about 2 cents per kilometer. And if you run a CNG car on a ride hailing platform, it costs about 3 cents per kilometer. And if you run a, a, a diesel or a petrol car, what's up with somebody running their cars on petrol and diesel today? But it will cost about 10 to 11 cents per kilometer. So, it doesn't make sense for anyone to, uh, to use a car on petrol and diesel. The cost of petrol and diesel has shot up in the last uh, five years, uh, in 2016 17, Sarkar used to be about 73 rupees a litre. Now the cost has substantially gone up, uh, almost 2x now, 100%. The cost of CNG has shot up by 40 50 percent So we increasingly see that by shifting to electric vehicles, uh, it's going to be a massive, massive advantage in terms of low fuel cost. Also, great for society like ours because uh, EVs have zero emission. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of innovation on the supply side. Now, since uh, we had other platforms which were built on the premise that drivers need to bring cars to the platform, and that's changing now. So, we are seeing new businesses which are being built, like Red in the US or like uh, Blue Smart in India, which is absolutely changing the supply side mechanism. So, applying the Pareto's principle, uh, what did Vincent Pareto say? He said that you can you know, put in 20% effort for 80% output. So, you now have DFI development financial institutions who are now investing in these assets uh, for, for building these schemes. Which means that the driver can stick to their core skill set of driving without asset ownership. Which means that there is opportunity for startups and businesses to create inclusive, equitable, economic opportunities for driver partners where drivers can stick to their core skill set of driving without asset ownership. So we are seeing a massive innovation supply side also in the US, also in markets like India and the UK. We are also seeing a full stack EV ecosystem approach. Um, so now to build a fully electric bike hailing service or to build a fully electric public transportation platform, we do many things right. We need to build out the charging infra, we need to build out underlying technology that connects the dots of charging infra, that connects, uh, that, that, uh, connects the mobility fleet with the charging infra, and the entire tech play. Uh, that completes the entire EV ecosystem. So we are seeing building EV super hubs is also going to be a uh, big leap forward for changing the entire energy landscape in India. These could also be powered by solar. Uh, as of now, largely India has one grid, one nation policy. So we draw power from the central grid, uh, which is not so clean. About 60-62% of the power is coal waste, thermal waste. But now we are seeing that number change. By 2030, it is estimated that hopefully. Uh, that number will slip. Uh, you could have about 55 60 percent of power being generated could be green or green waste. As of now, uh, that's the other way down. Uh, so, we are seeing that these EV super hubs uh, can accommodate tons of cars. So, you can also decongest cities. Uh, so, EV ecosystem requires charging infra and pump and drive hailing fees combined. And that's, that's what is called full stack. So, we are seeing the full stack EV, EV ecosystem approach also playing out well in markets like India and also the US. Now, just a case study about London, we spoke, we spoke about uh, uh, the challenges of air pollution in India, the rising air pollution levels in India, and uh, but let's see a case study for the UK. The AQI of London is 2, just 2. The AQI of, uh, for that matter, San Francisco is 45, the AQI for New York is in the range of 50, 55. I don't know much about uh, other parts of Europe, but if we see largely US or, or London, compared to that, Delhi has an AQI of like 250, north of that throughout the year, and it's about 500 or 550 
in those regions, uh, in, in the latest regions in India for those five or six months. Now, London is going fully electric. London is leading, is leading the acceleration of adoption of EVs to address the rising challenges of air pollution with an EQI of just two, uh, with pro EV policies. Now, if the drivers shift to uh, electric fleet or use it, uh, electric cars on the, on the platform to drive, they have massive fuel savings. The drivers can save about 300 pounds per month uh, on the fuel savings. Over and above, there is a UN ether charge, which is ultra low emission zone charge, uh, which the government of London or the transport for London has imposed. Uh, you end up paying about 12.5 GDP per day if you drive a non electric car on the roads of London. The drivers can also save on the congestion charge of 15 pounds. So, overall, they would be cost saving up 800 pounds if you shift from driving a non electric car to an electric car on the streets of London. So, massive, massive cost savings on the fuel side, fuel saving again on the UAE's and international charges. And that is taking a lot of right wing platforms uh, uh, through electric uh, in London. Uh, then is the case study. Uh, the Indian government in 2022 uh, came out with a policy that we should also follow London and build low emission zones uh, all across Delhi and CR. Uh, and also, there is a mandate to electrify public transportation platforms uh, and it's a mandate now by the Delhi government that all public transportation platforms should be fully electric uh, by 2030. The government has set the guideline and roadmap for that. Transportation accounts for 28% of all the greenhouse gas emissions in Delhi and CR. All the air pollution that we see is because of transportation. It is a very, very important part. Uh, and only if public transportation platforms go fully electric, can we have a better level, can we have a better future for the future generation to come? So there's a massive opportunity uh, to clean up the mess that our generation has created. Uh, the air pollution wasn't so bad uh, 20 years ago or 30 years ago, but in the last 20, 30 years, we have seen massive, massive uh, change in the demographics of Delhi and CR. There's so much job creation, so many people coming to Delhi and CR. We have seen massive amounts of cars, uh, buses, uh, two wheelers and four wheelers which have come on the on the roads and these are all for CNG, petrol and diesel. So now the government is going uh, with a clear mission mode that the new set of cars which will come on the platform have to be electric. And Gurgaon and Delhi obviously in the world's most polluted region for the last five years consistently. The AQI levels are north of 250 all throughout the year. So there is huge opportunity for uh, startups to now build evolving business models, uh, changing the entire supply side curve. There is no need to ask drivers to bring cars on the platform. We see in, uh, in India that largely taxi companies uh, require drivers to bring cars on the platform, where a poor driver uh, from the weakest section of society has to pay over $10,000 car first to be able to drive on the platform and they earn from it. We believe that's, that's, that's not the right step because you need to go through a two-step process. The core skill set of the driver is to drive and not bring an asset on the table. The driver is not a financer of the asset. Uh, so we fundamentally believe that there could be business models where startups can come forward, bring cars to the institutional mode, where there is no load on the driver to drive. That can really spruce up the supply side and you can have thousands of EVs coming on the platform using Pareto's principle where, where you can get cars from DFIs and deploy on the platform. You can create inclusive, equitable economic opportunities for driver partners. Uh, EV companies can create thousands of jobs for the new India, jobs for women, jobs for men, uh, and that could lead to massive, massive job creation. On the consumer front, we see a huge uh, uh, unformed challenge. Currently, when you take a cab, of Delhi and CR, you see a lot of challenges in terms of right denial, in terms of search driving. So there is massive opportunity for startups, for businesses, for entrepreneurs to come and create a business model which can give a better, safer, clean experience to uh, to consumers, where consumers, where women of India uh, feel safe traveling in cabs. Today there is a lot of uncertainty about women taking cabs and they don't feel safe traveling in odd times. So there is a massive opportunity for startups, for companies, for entrepreneurs like you to come forward and build business models which are for women, uh, which make them uh, safe, which make them feel safe when they travel in a cab. And there is a huge, huge opportunity to build public transportation platforms with a fully electric approach and a full stack approach. Now, climate action is necessary. But the good news is that 
this is a big mess out there. There's a lot of chaos, uh, for sure. Uh, we are trying to embrace the chaos, but the good news is that we all can take collective steps, contribute towards lowering emissions. In mega cities of India, like the NCR, by taking small and meaningful steps, you can buy an electric car, you can ride an electric car, you can probably use shared transportation, shared mobility, you can take a good car next time when you are in Delhi NCR. We fundamentally believe that shifting to public transportation and in public transportation shift to fully electric that will significantly reduce the greenhouse gas emissions in mega cities of India and make cities more livable. Uh, it will also create thousands of job opportunities for drivers uh, with the beneficiary of electric cars in, in Delhi and CR. There is also a huge opportunity to improve the customer experience for the customers by giving them safer, cleaner rides, maybe zero ride demands, maybe search driving, research innovation around the consumer front. Uh, and that will change the entire landscape of of uh, Delhi and CR. This is what we are also trying to do with our small little initiative. So I've been building a lot of solar power plants in the past, uh, but what led us to build uh, this ride gaining service was the fact that we saw a huge opportunity to clean up the mess in Delhi NCR. Delhi NCR is the world's most polluted region and that has to change. I think we all collectively as a society uh, have this uh, obligation, have the responsibility and accountability to clean up the mess. Most of the mega cities of India are, are highly polluted. Even we see Bombay for that matter has uh, AQI levels of north of 300, 350 now all for the year. And that has to change. Otherwise, uh, we won't be living in a better future. So our job, and I think collectively, young entrepreneurs like you, I think you have a great responsibility to try and do something for cleaning up the air of India. Thank you so much. I chose this subject today because it is something that really is concerning for me. Uh, and if we don't take this, the right steps now, maybe we're not, uh, maybe maybe we're not setting the right example for the future generations to come. So it's our job to clean up the mess, and let's all collectively do something.